The first article I wanted to talk about is titled Fellow Republican Rips Freshman GOP Representative Madison Cawthorn Over Insane Threat of Bloodshed. This is on Salon.com. It was written by Igor Derish, I think on August 31st. So let's give this article a read and see what it says. Representative Madison Cawthorn, Republican of North Carolina on Sunday, warned that there could be bloodshed in future elections while echoing former President Donald Trump's false claims about rigged votes. The far-right freshman congressman repeated the widely debunked narrative about election fraud during a speech to the Macon County Republican Party, despite federal intelligence warnings that such rhetoric could spark domestic terror attacks like the January 6th Capitol riot. I wanted to watch the clip. I actually got my hands on it. It was kind of difficult to get. And I got a couple of other clips to go with it. So let's give these clips a watch and see what Madison Cawthorn, a U.S. congressman, federal congressman, had to say. Check this out. But my friends, you know, everything that we're sitting here talking about, we're all so passionate right now. The things that we are wanting to fight for, it doesn't matter if our votes don't count. Because, you know, if our election systems continue to be rigged and continue to be stolen, then it's, it's going to lead to one place, and that's bloodshed. It doesn't matter if our votes don't count because there will be bloodshed. It's going to lead to one place, and that's bloodshed. This is straight up violent rhetoric. This is encouraging violent action against the opposing party, Democrats. This should be fucking concerning. This is the kind of shit you see when democracy is about to fall. This kind of thing right here. Now, do I think democracy in the U.S. is going to fall? I think we're halfway there already. I don't think there's going to be a full-blown civil war. I think we're just going to see a massive rise in terrorist attacks over the course of a few years, uh, over the following few years. If Donald Trump runs again, assuming that he loses, which is probably a safe bet because usually incumbents are really hard to unseat, it's most likely that Biden would stay the president in a few years when Trump runs. If he loses... He's going to completely undermine faith in the U.S. election system permanently. That's it. There, there isn't going to be any more faith in the election system after that point, after he has his way with it. That's extremely concerning. Let's finish this clip. And I will tell you, as much as I'm willing to defend our liberty at all costs, there's nothing that I would dread doing more than having to pick up arms against a fellow American. And this is encouraging violence right here. That's what he's doing, and he should be arrested for that. Seriously. Freedom of speech only extends so far. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater because it would lead to imminent harm. That, that's what he's doing right now. He is saying things that are going to lead to violence, directly lead to violence. This is like beyond stochastic terrorism at this point. This is getting people whipped up into a blood frenzy now. And in my opinion, he should be arrested for this. Not just deplatformed, but arrested. There's another clip that goes with this. This is from the same town hall meeting or whatever it is. Check this out. What are you doing to support the 535 Americans that were held captured in, from January 6th? What are you doing to support the 535 Americans that were captured from January 6th. The, the way that this person is framing the question is that the U.S. government is the enemy state who has captured, like, military combatants and imprisoned them, and she expects this person to take action to free those military combatants, those hostages, quote-unquote. Let's keep listening. Political hostages. Yeah. 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 He called them political hostages. People who took part in the January 6th insurrection. Political hostages. This is a U.S. congressman from the House of Representatives. So this is something that we are trying to figure out everything out about. Um, there are some criminal activities going on in my office. Literally, we have a lot to be able to ask almost any federal agency any question we want. And when we're seeking answers, they are giving us the biggest one around that you possibly can imagine. And so... Uh, the, the big problem is we don't actually know where all the political prisoners are. They're not political prisoners. They were insurrectionists. They rioted 
They trespassed. They broke laws. They are being charged with crimes because they committed crimes. There is a difference between being charged with a crime that you committed and being a political hostage. There's a difference. Where is this guy's head? And so if we were to actually be able to go and try and bust them out, and let me tell you. Holy shit. If we were actually to be able and go and try to bust them out. This guy is talking to a crowd of extremists about breaking people out of a prison system. A U.S. prison. This is a congressman talking about breaking people out of a U.S. prison system. Is this not sedition? Is this not, like, treason? What is going on here? If they really do view these people, like these insurrectionists that are in prison, if they view them as, like, military combatants from a different state, then they're supporting treason. That's what they're doing. Treason against the U.S., shall consist only in levying war against them or in adhering to their enemies, giving them aid and comfort. No person shall be convicted of treason unless on the testimony of two witnesses to the same overt act or on confession in open court. This is treason. If they really do view these people as like political hostages and they're talking about breaking them out of prison, that's treason. The line is they didn't view them as from another nation, but these people clearly do view them as from another nation now. They don't view themselves as part of the U.S. anymore. Apparently. I mean, based on what we're listening to here. This is fucking nutty. The reason why they're ta they've taken these political prisoners is because they're trying to make an example. To say, because they don't want to see the mass protests going on. No, no, no. I have no problem with mass protests. Do it. That is your right as an American. As the American I assume you identify as. I don't want insurrection or violence those are the problem those are the things i have a problem with i don't want insurrection or violence unfortunately that's what we're getting here i have no problem with mass protest example to say because they don't want to see the mass protest going on Washington. they don't want to see people redressing their government for leaving 13 marines to die at the instant. fascinating suddenly he gives a shit about 13 people where was he when 500,000 died from coronavirus? Where was he when that happened? This guy is a genuinely dangerous person for democracy, and I, I know this isn't going to happen, but he should be impeached. He should be removed from office at any cost. Get him the fuck out. They removed congressmen who wouldn't recognize Lincoln as the rightful president during the Civil War. They should do the same shit with these guys. Do you recognize Biden as the rightful president? No? Okay, then get the fuck out. That's how they should do it. Fucking just way out there, dude. And on top of all of that, as this article from Salon mentioned, there is a domestic violent extremism problem in the United States. Let's read this article. This is on usnews.com. By the way, I had never heard of this news network before. I looked them up. They are very reliable. They have high factual reporting, things like that. So uh, I trust this news source. It was written by Paul D. Schinkman. The nation's top intelligence office on Wednesday warned that domestic violent extremism groups pose an elevated threat in 2021, particularly white supremacist organizations and those fueled by anger over unfounded conspiracy theories of fraud in the November 2020 election, the perception of government overreach, and the federal response to the coronavirus pandemic. The March 1 report, declassified Wednesday afternoon, does not mention former President Donald Trump by name or reference his supporters specifically. However, the characteristics of the new threats documented by the Office of the Director of National Intelligence align with conspiracy theories Trump espouses, including that the outcome in the November election was was marred by fraud, a claim that has been repeatedly disproven by multiple investigations and dozens of federal court cases. And the report specifically cites the dangerous, emboldening impact of the deadly mob of Trump supporters that stormed the Capitol on January 6th. These factors will almost certainly spur some DVEs. I guess DVE is the person. It'll spur some domestic violent extremists to try to engage in violence this year, according to the report 
referencing domestic violent extremists. Racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists and militia violent extremists present the most lethal threats, the report states. The racially motivated groups which promote the superiority of the white race are most likely to conduct mass casualty attacks against civilians, and the militia groups typically target law enforcement and government personnel and facilities. This should be concerning to us. We should be very concerned over this fact. You guys remember not too long ago, uh, Governor Gretchen Whitmer, there was this plot to kidnap her from like her summer home by um, some people involved with the Three Percenters group. That's the kind of shit we're dealing with right now. These people are very extreme, and we should be on high alert right now. Anyway, let's keep reading this article by Salon about, uh, holy shit, Madison Cawthorn. God, I couldn't remember his name. Let's keep reading this about Madison Cawthorn. Anybody who tells you Joe Biden was dutifully elected is lying to you, Cawthorn declared in a video the party posted on its Facebook page before deleting it on Tuesday following blowback. The things that we're wanting to fight for, it doesn't matter if our votes don't count. Because, you know, if our election systems continue to be rigged and continue to be stolen, then it's going to lead to one place and it's bloodshed. The comments drew immediate condemnation, even from Cawthorn's fellow Republicans. This is insane, based on a total lie, tweeted Illinois Representative Adam Kinzinger, a Republican who voted to impeach Trump after the Capitol riot. This must stop. Something I've kind of come to accept over the past year, six months to a year, is that 15 to 20 percent of the country, maybe even a little bit more, are completely off their fucking rockers and are not willing to compromise or work with us or even hear us out on important things. You need them to get vaccinated because we don't want breakthrough cases, because we want to get back to normal? Nope. Not going to happen, even if the vaccine's free. They're not going to do it. Period. There's literally nothing in this world short of tying them down and sticking the needle in yourself that's going to get them to get that vaccination. Nothing. Same with climate change. You want them to work with us on getting climate, on getting something done about climate change? Not happening. They're not going to do it. I don't even know what you could do to get them on your side about that. Nothing. They are not going to work with us on these things. So I propose what we do is cut them out of the equation. Assume they're not doing it. Don't even fucking bother. Don't even bother trying. Don't try to get them vaccinated. Don't try to get them to wear masks. Don't try to get them to care about climate change because it's not happening. We can try to get the other people to care about that shit. You know, the people who may be on the fence. And we should. That's why I talk about this stuff. But don't bother with them. What we need to do is come up with a contingency plan that we can use based on the understanding that they're not going to work with us on these things. We're not going to be able to get the majority of the country on board with fixing climate change. It's not going to happen. Those people are going to be in the corner screeching and screaming at the top of their lungs about how their kid doesn't need to wear a mask and blah, blah, blah. They're not going to help us figure out a contingency plan to work around them. That's my hope. That's what I want to do.